Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Shaw Black from Toast After Dark. We have a special bonus episode presented by Coffee Dark and Sweet, an amazing poet, an amazing chef, an incredible writer, stepping stepping into the podcast realm with a new podcast called Midnight Coffee, along with Eric Tunstam Jr. They have amazing conversations with a variety of different people. But this particular episode, you guys are about to hear, Features none other than Toes After Dark's May Henny. So check it out. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know what you're feeling. Midnight Coffee is now on the Shodcast Network. She is part of the family. We are so happy to have her as part of the Shodcast family. And with that being said, we toast you would do. We present to you Midnight Coffee. What up, though? My name is Coffee Dark and Sweet, and this is Midnight Coffee. We got open organic adult discussion with culture shifting topics that ground us to our roots as we ascend into our divine purpose together. Speaking of together here with me today and always, I have Mr. Eric Thompson. What up, though? Introduce yourself to the people and tell us what you do and why you do it. Okay, my name is Eric Thompson Jr. I always say the junior because my dad came before me, so I got to add that to my name. Uh, I'm an author, a poet, and just a creative soul trying to find my way through this damn world. <laughs> I consider I consider Eric to be like a professor. Oh, um, yeah. He definitely, he definitely scratches surface-level things and um, bring forth new light, you know, beneath the beneath that surface in his work i i appreciate it um i have one of his books the emotional black guy and in it it allows me to journal um after i read you know his poetry and his and his place his emotional place of being as a black man um i get to journal from the same perspective within myself and it really is freeing and amazing um that is only one of his four books um so please check him out on instagram and facebook eric thompson jr hey, and amazon you can get him on and amazon, amazon. <laughs> you can also get them on amazon but if you bump into him in the street he got you facts yes always better to buy from the source people good plug little man for what <laughs> like i said before my name is um i'm known as coffee dark and sweet i am a poet a mother a painter uh Chef, baker, you know, maker. I'm um, infinitely creative. I thank God for the multitude of gifts that I have, like, daily. Um, my intention is to fill the pot and stir it up. Let's get some good content in it, and let's, let's mix and match it with each other and see, you know, if we can produce a projected positive outcome. That's what brains are made to do. So let's get to computing. Um, here to compete with us today, we have the beautiful May Henny, fellow poet. Tell us about yourself, baby. Hey, thank you for having me, guys. I appreciate you guys having me sure. here. I'm May. I am a co-host of Toast After Dark Podcast. I'm a poet. I'm a mother. Check us out on Shotcast Network, where you can find this as well. Um, and yeah, I'm just out here just going through life, figuring it out, trying to heal through my traumas and speak up. I'm a survivor and I'm just trying to reach back a little bit and do something positive. That's what's up. up. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. What you speaking up about? <sighs> Our traumas that we can, we don't have to be that shit that you can take control of your own destiny and figure it out for yourself. We can break these generational curses. I'm speaking out about the bullshit I've been through, hoping that somebody else going through it like me or been there, they can take something from me just speaking my truth. And That's being real. honest and real. Yeah. It was like, at one point, I was like, oh, like, I'm a synopsis in God's brain, right? Yeah. And then I think about all the thoughts and ideas I have per day. That's not including the blinks and breaths. Right. And I think about how small a synopsis is, and I understand, like, my part. As a whole. Right. Yes? Yes. But then when I think about how glorious and merciful and graceful it is to take a full breath, mm. I understand the weight of my existence. Gotcha. That's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Today we're here to talk about um, something that 
uh, plagues a majority, a vast majority of human beings, um, um, but specifically in, in, in specific communities, it is um, bred into, into the textile of our, of our nature, the fabric of our life. And that is mental illness. Um, I read a book called The Noonday Demon, and it referenced depression as a vine wrapped around a tree that was slowly, like, sucking the life out of this tree, mm. right? And with every, with however richer the vine grew, the sicker the tree grew. And it was healing for me because I saw this vine and the things that it grew were for me. And so as it grew, I grew, and we grew together. Mm. I was able to change the narrative because I had that visual to work with. So this is the beauty of, of reading books. <laughs> Please pick a book up. I'm, I'm looking it up right now because that's just sounds interesting. I like the title. Like, yeah. okay. <laughs> please, please pick a book up. Uh, Facts. So I was asking, I was asking everybody before, uh, before we started, like you know, where can if they can think about it, you know, when can they remember their first experience with a trauma? something that triggered something that perpetuated into a mental illness um, of sorts. And um, so I'm going to turn it to May. I'm going to give May the floor and okay. let her tell us about the first time that she can remember um, feeling out of control in a way with her emotions and thoughts and feelings. Okay. So um, a little bit about me. I identify as neurodivergent. Which just means my brain works differently. I was about people. to say what that means. <laughs> <laughs> it, it works differently than other people. I've uh, recently found out I have ADHD. Mm. I've been to I had depression, but anxiety as well. And it's, it cripples me mm. like to the point I can't get out my head, right. let alone out of bed, let alone take care of my baby some days. Right. So, um, yeah. So, t- her asking that question, like, when did I start to be able to look back and feel those feelings it's like during the journey i had to be able to learn the name of those feelings Mm. so now that i know the name of those feelings and what it feels like when i'm starting to head into a depression right what it feels like when i'm anxious i would say like young like between the ages of three and five and i'm thinking because that's when you starting to become aware of yourself yeah you're starting to become aware of your relationships with other people um, outside of your mother. And so if something traumatic happens and the feelings you feel after that, I would say something closer to around that age, right. whether it was just <sighs> sick shit, like, or just stumbling into some shit, finding some porn to somebody's right. that as a kid, you wondering like, what the like, fuck what is, is this? Crazy. Mm-hmm. I've known what sex how was since I was three years old. So, oh, yeah. happens. It's yeah. crazy how innocent corruption actually is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I think uh, learning about sex at a very early age, um, I'm pretty sure that has some trauma and just having to hide shit. That's anxiety. Right. Scares you're going to get caught if you get a whooping. That's anxiety. Mm -hmm. Or knowing that you can't do this or finding out you can't do that because you're scared of the repercussions. That's anxiety. And being yourself. Yeah. Or finding yourself. That part, too. And I know, like, for me, my mom was a single mom, so I had my dad's side, and I stayed over there with older people, I'm talking like 65 and up, and I'm the only three for five year old. Damn. You feel me? Like, it is just me. I'm the girl, and I'm the only girl on the street full of boys. Wow. You feel me? So when I go outside, it's all boys to play with. You feel me? So um, just thinking about those times and wanting my mom when I couldn't have her because she couldn't manage three kids as a teenage mother, you know what I'm saying? Um, that type of shit, I know I'm, I remember a deep yearning for my mommy mm-hmm. around those age. So I'm pretty sure that's depression. Yeah. I'm pretty sure looking back and just, it's fucked up because the way my brain's so fucked up now, I can't remember. I'm not going to remember half of this conversation we having right now tomorrow. Yeah, I'm not. For real? For real. So I'm going to have to go back and listen the to it. The short-term but memory loss. The short-term it memory. It actually is a, it's actually a symptom of the burnout, ADHD, ADHD, burnout, yeah. bipolar schizophrenia mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of mental illnesses mm-hmm. have a short-term memory loss 
portion of them. And also COVID. Weirdly (laughs) enough, COVID has a lot of mental illness repercussions Mm. and which is, that's a whole nother topic no, for all that's, real. No, that's really real. But I, illnesses yeah. be coming out they like coming. new fish be dropping. <laughs> like what the fuck is a swai? Oh my god, so <laughs> nasty. I said, what the fuck? It tastes like if recycled newspaper Ew. was a fish. <laughs> and then no matter how you cook it, because first I put it oh in the oven, God. and then I was like, "Oh, it tastes like that." Because I put it in the oven. And what, are you, fried, what did you fried. call it? What is it? Swai. S W A I. I already it. don't <laughs> eat tilapia. Tilapia is already bad. Yeah. I remember, but I remember when that came out. That's why I stopped eating it because I shouldn't be able to remember it in my lifetime when when a new fish dropped like an Usher album or something. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Right? It's I not like a Beyonce tilapia. album. It's a species of animal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so I stopped eating tilapia. So swai came out, and all of a sudden everybody talking about it like, "Oh, this is so random," but. But I'm glad we. I'm glad it is brought up because what we eat has a a very crucial impact on facts. our mental mm. health. Facts, facts, whole facts. Yeah. Get a book. It's a book called Grain Brain. It will change your life. Mm. Um. How how, and it's actually movies about it, like Midsummer Nights Dream, shit like that, or Midsummer, the one where they were swimming around with flowers on their hands, fucking each other crazy. That's what crazy. Was that? Midsummer. That's how I know what you're talking about. Yes, but I and never seen there's it. like it, it give you hints about it being curses in the wheat and how the roots will trick your brain. Oh, but yeah, anyway, yeah, 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 the, yeah. The, in the book Grain Brain, they they uh, they pretty much tell you and break it down how um, uh, a wheat is a degenerative germ and it breaks down your brain cells and is a very large cause of like dementia and stuff in our old age wow. and there are things that is taken from us just like just like a, a weed addiction or an alcohol addiction will take parts of your brain with it mm-hmm. as it goes sugar addiction which yeah. starts mostly yeah. with grains because and the way that they are processed now today they are nowhere near the same as they was in the biblical bread sense you know um so it's really breaking down the context of our brains and like literally turning our brains into mush it is <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, we really gotta be careful what we eat. We are what we eat, we are what we think. Um so yes, sidebar, Eric. Yeah. Uh can you can you tell us of like your earliest your, the earliest emotion that you can call? What's the earliest emotion you can call? And how old were you when you called? So when we were speaking earlier, I I spoke about uh when I I was three years old, three or four maybe, and I stabbed my cousin. And we were, like, in the basement playing. I can remember vividly, like, I can see the knife right now. Like, the floor, I can remember that part. I don't remember stabbing him. I remember getting whooped afterwards. And I was thinking about it, though, like, because I, I don't feel the the effect of the trauma, like, directly. But I, I've been thinking lately, like, I, that shit had to do something to me as a child. Like, other than just getting a whooping. It's like, hold on, what did that make me do? And, like... I guess it's like the good the good guy image I've been trying to figure out how I was talking to a friend yesterday and I was like I don't know why people always feel like they got to be perfect around me. And then I'm like, "Damn, it's because I don't show them my bad side." Wow. And then so I started thinking back to like like damn, that traces back to then like, "Oh, I'm trying to be the good kid because I was always considered the bad kid because of that incident." That's the first one I can remember. Redemption. Yeah, it's so crazy. And I'm like, damn, now I'm looking like, who am I? Yeah. <laughs> that Do you shit is feel wild. like you've earned the redemption? Yeah, I'm not, because I feel so like. far removed from it. Yeah, it wasn't like, I I never felt like I was directly trying to redeem myself. But now I'm looking at it like, oh, maybe it's just an innate thing now. Like, I got to show who I am. Like, the real you. Yeah. That's, I feel like I feel like who you are is a decision that you make. No, for sure, for sure. For sure. Um, and, it's a, and it's not a decision that you make. Once a year, it's a decision yeah, you make every, every day, every single single moment, single day, mm-hmm. and everything that we go through in life gives gives us the opportunity to change our minds, right? And sometimes we do. I I I'm known to encourage people to not to fuck up. I feel like you know we spend our whole lives being tolerant, yeah, and complacent, yeah. and and non confrontational <laughs> to what ends Definitely. and to what means. When you say about non-confrontational, too, I think about myself, and I've always avoided conflict. The older I got, the more I did it. And I'm like, damn, why? Good guy. Yeah, it's like my aunt said it to me one time, too. She was like, 
every time it's an argument, I just like I'm getting the fuck on. Like, <laughs> like why are you always running from confrontation? And I was, I'm like, I, cause I don't want to be arguing about dumb shit. But I think about it now. It's like sometimes that shit is necessary. Like you got to get out because sometimes you harboring whole shit in, mm. and the only way to get it out is the arguing, the unraveling. So yeah, the truth is always a worthy foundation. Yeah, yeah. No in, matter in how my, it come up. Yeah, and yeah. that's something I had learned in my adult life. And and I remember uh, talking to somebody about like things I experienced as a child, and then being like, and I'm saying stuff like I could have made a different decision, blah 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 blah. And that's me being like self aware, right? I remember the kind of thoughts I was thinking when I was that age. I could have made a decision to do something different. Mm -hmm. There are people who make a different decision all the time. They run away. They yeah. they make all types of different decisions yeah. in order to protect themselves from certain things. Yeah. And for some reason, I chose complacency. Mm. So that's 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 uh, an accountability measure that for some people think is like too far seeking, but for me, I just claim responsibility for right, myself, right? You know, yeah. and all of myself, even at even at its young adolescent stages, because I wasn't too young to question the nature of God and Santa Claus and <laughs> and and all these other things. I and and the first emotion I can remember feeling is fear, you mm. know, is anxiety, not yeah. knowing. Um, you know, being, because, you know, I was adopted. So I was, like, flung into a brand new environment with a brand new person, and and this is my leader now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, um, and being, being adopted is a trick, a mind, a mind game in itself. Mm -hmm. That there isn't a, is a identity crisis yeah, that exists sure. within that sure. all on its own. Even yeah. if that was the only thing that I ever, you know what I'm saying, had to experience. It was just the the and complete and total fear and shock of mm -hmm. of a new, brand new. It's that separation family. from your foundation, yeah. It's that a separation, and, and, yeah. and this is and and me being adopted can help me understand my plight on a cellular level because I'm black also. Right. So it didn't and it, it didn't just start and begin with my family. Um, everybody who came from my family was ripped from their source. Right. Mm. And, and torn and stolen from their mm -hmm. source. So they don't have no light there. They can't, they mm -hmm. don't know. Right. I'm sorry, I'm trying to say this in a, like a, late, in a way that it makes sense to a lot of people. It's, it's hard to illuminate darkness when that is all, when you're born from a shadow. Yeah, exactly. When you, when you, when you don't know your language, your history, your, no your the trace source of, of your energy, all, you know, yeah, exactly, yeah. no trace of yourself. Yeah. So for me, I spent my entire life looking for myself and people who could not conjure me. Mm. How old were you when you got adopted? Um, I, it was before I was two. But wow. I remember I remember meeting my mom. Wow. I remember, you remember I remember that? So like 18 I, yes. months. Yes, that's crazy. like wow. 18 months, exactly. Wow. That was the youngest picture that's that traumatic. I had. I don't so got early that trauma. Is yeah. That was the youngest picture that I had. You remember trauma first. Mm -hmm. And a lot you of remember. people, that when I, they say I'm bullshitting, and people don't expect me to be able to remember certain stuff that's because crazy. I was so young. And I'm like, just because I I might get the date wrong, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that don't mean I don't it's know what I'm talking about. I know life. how yeah. it felt. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is something that cannot be removed from me. Mm -hmm. This is something I've been trying to remove from me for years. It can't come off me. You know, it's it's a... it's. It, and people who have not been there can't relate <laughs> and they could never wow they really could oh, never oh. and 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 i and what made me actually want to do this episode is i was at my complete and total wit's end <laughs> and i got into a place in life where i had not only i had decided i was dead this mm. has to be hell right it's like a continuous trauma loop. What exactly is going on here? This is exactly how they describe hell. All the yeah. times I tried to commit suicide or almost got choked out by a person or whatever the fuck it is I was going through. Like, they obviously worked. Right. And I have died. Right. And this is hell. Like, yeah. this is, like, you yeah. could not convince me yeah, that I was true. alive. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Yeah. And, and it sounds crazy, I know, but yeah, it's, no, that's, that's where real. I was. And in that space, is somewhere, sometimes, that... God really got to take you to, because if you're not encompassed in darkness, how will you ever learn to seek light? Because you really got to chase it. It's something that you really gotta you gotta chase it to okay. find it. Um, and and in my in my darkness, in my, um, you know, I consider it being buried, you know, under dirt. Under. Like you know, what I'm saying so many people had threw dirt, and I had been so accustomed to eating dirt, I became as dark, as black as the dirt. I didn't, you know. And um, 
it was like God showed me the source of my trauma, which which a lot of people talk about generational crisis, but you know, I read the Willie Lynch letters and I read the souls of black folk. I read, you know, um, I got, I got into it, you know, the conditioning. Gotcha. Um, and I understand, you know, breeding and how they would buck break men right. and breed black women to have tens and twenties of babies yeah. and, and how, um, and they talk about this in, in, this is why I love Jordan Peele because of the layers of information in his in his cinema. But he kind of showed us how in them how um, they, you know, tricked black people into these um, these um, predatory lending mortgages. Right. in these neighborhoods mm-hmm. full of people who did not love or like them right. and and you know attack them until the point where they essentially possessed them and the father ended up in jail and the mother ended up in a mental institution yeah. and these and, and it was and it was, was so crazy. beautifully <laughs> I missed that show <laughs> it was such a beautiful cinematic experience yes, it was. I, uh, and you, but you, <laughs> can, you can feel your blood boil because yeah. it's there. You can you can feel, feel your blood the truth boil in your you cells. Can feel it. Like yes. it wasn't. Fu- it was very entertaining, but it wasn't funny. It because was not you knew fucking funny. That could have been your auntie. That could have been real. your it grandmother. Was, yeah. That for me, exactly. it somebody. was not. Could have yes. been. It was it not. Was. Was See, my mother and yeah. her mother were both born in mental institutions. Wow. It's not fake. Wow. It's real. Right. And and this is this is what made me want to do this show. This this topic on this show because I can see God revealed the trick of the enemy to me and it allowed me to set myself free from from being from suffering from mental illness mm. right because I understood how it was bred into me damn and it's something about when you put stuff in writing these the Willie Lynch letters were real it was it was a decree that was written down the the money the notes the the notes that we hold in our hand this is a letter yeah it's it's writing in it it's a spell that they cast on you it's a curse like literally and i was able to see how okay so i got two generations of women who were born in mental institutions not not just have been to mental institutions were born in which means my grandmother was, I mean, my great grandmother was obviously in a mental institution as well for my mother to, to have, have been kid. born yeah, into one. Yeah. For my grandmother and my mother to have been born into them. Wow. So, two plus two is always four. Yeah. Back in the day, they were giving heroin and meth and all types of drugs all the, yeah, to people in mental institutions. Majority were women, not just, not just black women. Majority black women, but majority women in general, the hysterical women, women who didn't listen to their husbands, husbands yeah. and, and decided they didn't feel like cooking the one day, woman. ended mm-hmm. up yes. in mm-hmm. mental institutions yeah. where they was literally stirring their brains with drills Damn. and giving them heroin okay. and crack cocaine mm-hmm. to, to get them to be docile and complacent. And then they released these women and people onto the streets and they introduced these same drugs into the streets as street drugs. And the the symptoms of bipolar and the symptoms of drug abuse and drug Hand addiction hand. are, are the same parallel. Idea. They are yeah. fucking identical. It's, it's really crazy to me how we all sit around with blindfolds on and act like we cannot see the devil's hand. And the work and literally the, the system itself. Then you have the black men in prison and the, the mental torture and anguish that go on in prison, the buck breaking that still continues to happen to this day. We all know that, that being raped is one of the biggest fears that people have when it comes to prison and inmate lifestyles It's continuously talked about and joked about, which means we all know and have an understanding that this is happening. Mm -hmm. Why is it acceptable? This is a state, Funded, we are paying to have our brothers and uncles raped. Yes, talk about. It. I'm just saying. No, when we when you, you, we really have to at some point take the control back. The the drugs that they I remember when I had a uh, I had an experience with um, you have children. Mm-hmm. 
postpartum depression. Yeah. Oh, that's a bitch. <laughs> that's a whole bitch. I had it both times too. Only after the second time was I able to recognize what it was or what it was. I had to learn about it, but that's something you just don't know. You got this brand new gift and you just don't know why you just, you can't get it right. Mm. It's, a, it's a horrible feeling. You don't know why. I know for me, I, it was like, well, I don't, I, well, I should feel something for this little human in my hands and I don't. Right. Like what's going on? It's not quite there. Mm. And, and I couldn't, didn't want to shower. I didn't want to get out. I didn't want to breastfeed my baby. Right. I knew if I didn't feed her, you know, something. So my sister had to come over and help me. And wow. then my mom had to come over and help thank me. Thank God for them. Yeah. Thank God for them. So that postpartum is so many women suffering from that shit alone. in silence. Alone. In silence. I cannot imagine doing that alone. Wait. I can't say I'd be here. Mm. I can't say my babies say. would be here. Mm. I honestly can say that. If I was alone and they hadn't checked on me, I can't say we'd still be here. Damn. But on top of dealing with, I didn't even know I had ADHD then. You right. know what I'm saying? So um, just, just people, were, I'm, I, I'm grateful that people were able to know me enough to know that I wasn't myself. And, yeah. and I was crying and I should have been happy, you know. But yeah, that, that shit right there. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy, but yet yeah, it's something that we don't get to talk about. Yeah. And it's happening every goddamn day. Yeah. And there's a big chunk of judgment, shame. First of all, what people don't understand is a mother who is experiencing any type of disproportionate negative emotion towards their child is already suffering. There is a level of shame I'm supposed to naturally do this. It's supposed to be easy. It's supposed to, I'm supposed to be full of love and joy. These are things that they tell you to expect. And when you get them and don't have them, when you actually have a child and you don't have that experience, the first person you attack is yourself. Yeah. And the world follows through. If you, if you don't have any specific person lean on and you try and lean on the world the world will eat you <laughs> the world can't understand why you can't experience immense joy when you look at your child they don't have no room for the reality that is mm -hmm. depression in general Hormonal but more specifically <laughs> Hormonal, the hormonal changes that come with having a child. Yes. And, and for me, like, and I know you can probably like pinpoint this too, but there were things that were going on in my life outside of being a mother that played a very substantial role in my ability to be a mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there are, there's, there's not a rule book or right. blueprint or any type of, reference any real tangible reference to go to when you have children and it's a lot of work to to just decide you know they chose me too that means however i am that means whatever i am i i when i first got diagnosed with bipolar um they gave me an ssri it's a serotonin reuptake inhibitor and that's literally the opposite of what you're supposed to give somebody with bipolar and that's a well-known thing that you do not give somebody with bipolar ssris I had hallucinations of like extreme violence that I have never in my life imagined I could think. Mm. My my mind went to places that I didn't know it could go and I was literally afraid of myself. Mm. Talk about it. <laughs> it's real. These are fine. these and this is and that was something that was induced by a medication that was given to me by a psychiatrist. Yeah. That was not, that's not my nature. To so be. that's intentional. Intentional. Mm -hmm. There we go. Can we, yes, it's intentional. And I feel like we, we miss that part. A lot of us, you know, for people who are good at faking the funk. And I say that because to some level, we all have mm -hmm. some type of mental Hell illness, yeah. whether it be PTSD, which is the most common form right. because we all experience trauma on some level, which Jordan Peele also referenced in the movie, get out. And the therapist kept clicking that T cup. Right. And every time mm -hmm. she did it triggered the memory of your deepest mm -hmm. 
trigger That's crazy. because it takes you right back to being three and five mm-hmm. years old when you were the the bad boy and the mm-hmm. fast girl mm-hmm. and you didn't feel like you had any control over yourself. Mm-hmm. So when when you when you feel like that and you triggered into now I can't even breathe right. My windpipe's all twisted up and, and air is not moving through me freely. I'm crippled. Right. And I am stagnant. That's true. And I don't know how to move my body. I can't convince my body that it's worth it to move. That I'm safe enough to move. I I'm can't safe convince enough my body move. that I'm safe enough to move or whatever this environment is. Yeah. We all so both you, said that, though. My bad. No, go ahead. I thought about isolation. Mm-hmm. And when we talked about the prison and the mental institution, like what's the point of them getting you in there to the get isolation. you away from your people? And when you talked about postpartum, it's like, I needed somebody to come help me because I couldn't do it by myself. Mm-hmm. They put you in a place where it's like you don't have no type of community. Yeah. We we your help. Yeah. So you do what I say. And it's like that. You that, take these oh pills. Oh, my God. That just. Or oh your man. self-isolation. Like when we was talking about, mm. you know, like as I'm coming out of that, <laughs> and you notice this when people come out of prison, I don't know how to relate to people. Yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah. how to talk it's to like, people. It's like, what the fuck is this? I'm so yeah. serious. Because you really do have to rehabilitate you have to. yourself mm-hmm. into mm-hmm. society. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> and then it's a whole new batch of weird shit every couple months. Right, and right. I, especially with, like, the social media. I'm telling you, I cannot keep up with the weirdness. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Really? Well, no, that's oh, real as right. fuck. You gotta rehabilitate it. yourself. What are we society. calling each other now? <laughs> right. Like, what is this? Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> yeah. yeah the um, it's it's important to be able to if you think about it, if you're listening, and you can think about the very first emotion you ever felt. For a lot of us, especially in the person of color community, that first memory is dramatic. Definitely. But when you think about it, if you can take that memory back to birth, it's always going to be traumatic. Mm -hmm. It don't matter how far back your memories go. Mm -hmm. The first memory is always going to be trauma. Yeah. Triggers is what make, they really are what makes you real. Yeah. How could you know, you know what I'm saying, what's important to you, what, what, uh, what means the world to you if you have not had that at some point threatened? And we have to accept that just as we are becoming more comfortable with ourselves and and the way that we react and process the trauma that we all this is an experience that is blanketed. We all are. Mm-hmm. And it's not just the people who are willing to sit up and say, Hey, you know, I was I was victimized at three. Mm-hmm. I was I was a predator at three. I was you know, or, or or come to terms with their own experiences. It's not it's not a lot of people who can do that, and it's and it's not just for them either. Mm-hmm. The people who cannot who cannot reach those levels are still there, and we have That's to so figure cool. out a way to make room for them and keep ourselves safe at the same time. And it does not require the kind of torture and further, um, you know, degenerative programming that happens in prisons and mental institutions. The only reason why those things exist is because somebody who was supposed to take responsibility did not. And so now that person has become a ward of the state it is in because it is the only thing that it belongs to. This person is nobody's baby. Mm. Right? We, we, have to, we have to raise ourselves to a level of, of concern, not just for what comes out of us as our own children, or what had us as our parents and aunts and uncles. But, like, when we think of, oh, Susie down the street is on her third man and her fifth kid, and, you know, she can't figure her life out. Okay, can somebody go and check on Susie and bring her a casserole or a couple of dollars or something to let her know that God was real? I'm just saying, when are, when are we going to start to accept responsibility for what is happening in our communities and neighborhoods. Because the stories that we tell in, I live six minutes from here. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? We, we, we 20 minutes, 15 minutes away from each other. We are each other's community. Um, and there is a level of, like, throwing 
hands up that it's happening, that everybody wants to say, oh, not my baby. I think it's a level of fear, too. Definitely. We scared of each other. Mm. We scared of each other. I was thinking about your scenario with Susie down the street, three baby daddies, five kids. And everybody making fun what of her. What if I help her? Helping. What if I help her? And I'm trying to do the right thing. And one of her baby daddies come up and shoot me. Because yeah. I'm trying to, <laughs> I kind of yeah. got into some stuff with his baby mama. Mm-hmm. They perpetuate that type of stuff on the internet so much yeah. that yeah. it's in, that part is engraved in us too. Yeah. So I don't even think about I, that kind of stuff. I do. I do too. I do. I'm not going to That's lie. real though. I do. The first thing when she said that, I was like, when do when is it time where you be like, all right, wash your hands with people too? Because yeah. that's a thing. Like everybody can't cut. Right. So so it made me think of like, damn, some people are like, when do you determine who's unhelpable or unfixable? Like it's like I don't feel like I feel like I feel like there's a big leap with your own between unhelpable and though. unfixable. Everybody is helpful. Right. And you can give even if you send a person five dollars a week, yeah, they don't gotta know it's coming from you. They don't gotta know where it's coming from. Right, make sure they get five dollars a week. Right, that's evidence. That's a hope. Yeah, that's real, and it's simple and very easy to do. And it's painless. Um. So I just, I cannot agree that there is ever a time where we where we. Throw the baby out with the bath water. Mm-hmm. Nobody is garbage. Yeah. I, I just, I, I'm sorry. I don't. And, and I know there are people who do incredibly disgusting, vile, intense things. And that, 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 and we would look at them and think they do not deserve mercy. But because I am human, And the things that I have seen just within my own mind, yes, I have the wherewithal to not participate in those delusions. But I cannot attest for the flesh of every man. I'm telling you, I just don't think nobody is unworthy. It made me think, though, when you said everybody deserves mercy, it's like sometimes I think about, like, damn, they deserve mercy, but sometimes they don't deserve your mercy. Right. I agree. I agree with that. Every battle is not yours. Yeah. And it's less about, that's why I said painless, because I'm, it's like a boundary that I have when I'm lending something to somebody. Yeah. Right. I don't ever give anything I'm going to need right back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it is not an abundance to me to give, I don't have it to give. Right. God did not design for me to give that to you. So. Yeah. (laughs) I think (laughs) it's As we all learn in our boundaries too. Yeah. Because yes. people scared to take get taken advantage of. Facts. You know what That's I'm saying? That fear like you if talk I help about, I'm yeah. giving you five dollars like you said every week. What if you follow me home one day and come up in my crib now you want the rest of my money? Mm-hmm. Like that I hate how my mind works, but that's how it works. Yeah. So but I don't wanna be like that. I do wanna reach back and give back to my community. And like you said, everybody is. So me living far out, I do wanna laugh especially after last night, I wanna come back and figure out how I can help bring our people forward because right. me saying safe out somewhere where I can leave my doors unlocked when that's not the reality for a lot of people. It make me feel some type of fucking way. Yeah. I mm-hmm. can't change that, but what I can do something, yeah. but you know, it, I can't say like as a human, that fear still is not the fucking there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. One, like people look at me like I'm eating and I'm not, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But that just cause you I think I'm eating. Thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm a target. It and turns that's to the, a perception. That's the, yeah. Survival mode versus mm. when you're out of survival mode, you can reach down and give back to the people that's instilled in survival mode. It's, 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 that's the part where I'm feeling like I got to learn the level of discernment mm. as I'm reacclimating myself to humans. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And boundaries and stuff. That's so that's, a, that's, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. But, you know, I would still say, like, that anxiety that I deal with, it's, you know, it's, it's still there. It's a, it's a reality Very for me. Real. And I know... As you said, it's a generational thing. My mama sent us shit that happened on in crime in the deep every okay. fucking morning. Yeah. yeah. You know, she y'all going to the city, y'all but y'all in the city, y'all in the city. So it's an ex, you get what I'm saying? Generational yeah. anxiety. Yeah. Mm. And a lot she of people lived think in the city our whole life. Yeah. They yeah. think that's protection. She mean no harm. Protection. She trying she to help no you. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. She, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm on, like, the interjectional side. I'm on the side of, like, okay, I can't stay isolated, you know what yeah. I'm saying, so long. I got to, you know, do something. 
I don't know what, but even if so it's just walk the blocks with Zeke. Tell us what happened last night. So high level conversations with 19 Keys, Billy Carson and Zeke uh, from New Era, Detroit happened last night. And when I say that shit was history in the making, like I hope they released some type of footage or something. Mm. Where where was it at? It was everything. It was at the Masonic Temple, okay. and it was I just posted it, and somebody invited me. They had an extra ticket, so I was really grateful right. to get that opportunity. Yes, and um, it just felt like I was supposed to be there. But they talked about everything that we're talking about now. How yeah. basically how where they're at in their life. They're finding issues in how Zeke is with New Era of Detroit. Like when the ladies getting killed, 80 year old grandma's getting mm -hmm. raped, it's only 10 men showing up yeah. to stand up against to this stop cause this with shit. them. Yeah. We are so easy to turn our eye mm -hmm. and turn our back because we don't became the comfortable nigga now. Yeah. Yeah. This, and that's the same thing I was saying about Sally, though. Yeah. Don't turn your back on Sally either. Yes. I get it. So as trying to be accountable now and, and listening to that, like the soldiers, you know, what I'm saying our soldiers need the thinkers they everybody not a warrior right you know what I'm saying right. but some people can write letters to uh to legislation yeah you a yeah. poet you could probably yeah. help out with that you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying some people can make sandwiches to help pass out to the poor mm. we all could come together and give Play back to role. help lift our people up we're not gonna have a choice way. in a minute I'm telling yeah. you, I'm telling you, going. the we way I feel, we don't have a choice now we don't yeah. have a choice now you right sure. but no. in a minute it's people they sitting at home they smoking they they smoking their blunts, they drinking their lean, they 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 not even in their right minds. Mm -hmm. When I tell you God gonna come through like a thief in the night yes. and snatch every curse the devil laid mm -hmm. down and give these people back their right mind and yeah. they gonna jump into roles. Yes. They gonna just jump into their self and ways yeah. and be things they never knew they could be. Like it's gonna be really, really amazing. Mm -hmm. And I just hope that we all are preparing to be our best self. That's what this is about. It's about mm. let first of all, pretty much if you black, we come from the same place. Period. We all come from the same exact roots, one seed, one person, one sound. And the the earth, if you listen to it, if you put your ear to the ground and listen to the earth, it sounds just like the blood rushing through your veins. It's not a joke. I'm not like being, oh, it's real. <laughs> 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 if you listen, it's real. We really got to really tap in and, and hold ourselves accountable for that sound. Be that sound. Create that sound for ourselves. Taking care of your family is radical. Just your own family alone. If you get up and mow your grass, when you get to your ankles, radical. Do your thing. Take care of you and yours. And it's like, I had somebody tell me today that my family was contagious. The Brazil side. My mama had 25 kids. Damn. Out her vagina. Wow. Magical. I don't understand it. Gotta be ordained by God. That's the only way I see it. Um, and my 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 daddy and my brothers, they it's a lot of people in my family that still live in Detroit, they not living in the best ways. And the same reasons why I was adopted. You know, the, the same mm -hmm. things are happening still. Right. And the Muslim at the store today and he's like, um, you know, the Brazils they are contagious. Mm. And I really wanted to smack the fuck out of him. And I told him that. I was like, he, 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 he was saying all that behind that glass. So if you let me back there, I'm going to smack the shit out of you just so you know. Like, I don't think that's something. I just don't. I'm, I'm not comfortable with somebody who not even skin folk yeah. playing about my name. I, I don't Put care. It's just saying. I'm just saying. Feel the God. But in that, in that contagiousness, mm -hmm. the, the realness of what he said, and this is why God is real, because God will put blessings in the mouths of degenerates. And what I heard was contagious. I'm a Brazil. I'm contagious. The more radical I am about taking care of my family and being the best version of myself, it's going to catch on like a virus. Mm. I love it. It's <laughs> I love it. I'm glad you Spread spent the shit. word, too, because I was thinking that when you said it, like, contagious. Like, I feel like... When we talk about helping others, you got to get to your root of your cause and what's what's going on with you first. Like, I can't f pour from an empty cup. So yeah. I got to deal with me first. Amen. That's how we help our community. You got to start with more. yourself. And Steve Harvey, That's, he's talking a lot of bullshit, yeah, and I really don't like Steve his Harvey. big shoulders. <laughs> but he said, I cannot do nothing for the poor if I'm poor too. Yeah. Fuck Steve Harvey, though. But. Fuck Steve Harvey, though, yeah. <laughs> I'm not. No, nah, that's honest. real. Though. I'm not that's into real. it. But that's he said. The thing about it is, he's successful. There are certain fundamental things that come with success, 
And that's why all of them pretty much sound cookie cutter when they get to talking about yeah. how they got to how they got yeah. to. Because they focused on the thing. They believed in a mm-hmm. source they couldn't see. Right. They yeah. manifested and spoke on what they knew their truth was to be. The power of the mind is something so incredible and magnificent that a lot of people are taken advantage of because they came with that hardware. And they think, Request. you know, they, they add stuff to the outside of themselves to make themselves feel valuable, but it's the priceless things. Hmm. It's the free things right. that come with being born, the gifts that God gave us. Mm-hmm. Talent has done so much more for me than money ever could. Facts. And that's just fact. I didn't, the God did that. I didn't decide. Like I say, I, I never decided to be any, even a cook. I never said, oh, I want to grow up and cook. Right. Ever. Mm. I had a cooking mama and a cooking grandma. And when I met my biological family, I found out I got a cooking uncle, auntie, brother, sister. It's in my blood. Yeah. It's in my, bl- it's in my nature and my nature. I didn't even have a choice. See? It chose you. It just happened. Yeah. And I'm not the only one. You a poet. Mm-hmm. Did you decide one day, like, oh, I'm going to just be a poet? No, I just wrote my feelings one day, and I was like, I can read this. And right. People was like, yeah. And I was like, I, I like this. I want to keep trying this. I want to get better at this. I want to use my voice in this way. Was it therapeutic? Uh, It was scary, mm. but it was powerful. And I'm starting to learn that anytime I have that feeling in my gut, I'm going in the right direction. Right. That's facts. That's yeah. Facts. No matter how slow I'm going, long as I'm scared, but it's like a burning anxiety, mm-hmm. then I'm on the right track to yeah. keep doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, I don't, is is that, pa- look, I don't know. Is, is that, is that like how I feel? Of fear? I don't know. Yeah. It, yeah I, I, I'm feeling it like <laughs> it's like the opposite of what fear would be. Mm. Fear would be a burning that stunts you. Mm-hmm. Fear would yeah. be. It stop. Uh, it'll sear you yeah. at the ends, and passion would ignite you. That makes sense. And, and it will give you a burn that is is in, is insatiable almost. Mm-hmm. There is no limit in to this. When you say yeah. that though, it made me think because I I look at fear as like I don't like being afraid of shit, so it make me like attack it. Mm-hmm. Like with Love poetry, that. like I literally was scared as fuck to talk in front of people, and I'm like, and why not? You are... Why not? Host on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Four right. books in town. Right. <laughs> Turn up. That's crazy. I don't even look at fear as bad no more because sometimes yeah. it's, well, I'll say this, it's healthy fears too. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, like fear fuel is healthy the passion. in general. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I feel like at one point, at one point I realized like, okay, I had this thing that I was, I called the suicide panic button. So every time I had a minor inconvenience, I'd be like, oh, it's time to die. Obviously, mm. nobody loves me. It's the end of the world. Right. <laughs> to make it extreme. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, my hair's not done. <laughs> Bitches hate me. It'd <laughs> 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 be like that, though. <laughs> Back in this shit Fuck in the corner life. for the third time today. I'm sick of shit. Just like, <laughs> help me. <laughs> <laughs> When I realized what I was doing, it was like, yo, it's like fear is there to tell you, it's to say, hey, pay attention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shit, the fuck is going on here? Yeah. If you keep if you keep this up, this how you gonna end up. Like, yeah. Stop tripping with yourself. Yeah. Come on back, bring right. it on back, you know. Right. Not to say, hey, stop. That's not what fear does. Right, like, I run the other way. And like, I'm trying yeah. to get my kids to understand this right now today. Like, they're five or seven, and I'm like, look, you can have every right to be scared. Feel all the feelings you want to feel. But if you fucking stop, or if you stop yourself from receiving the help you need because you're scared, like, do you understand the quality of life you're going to have? Yes, yeah. Real conversation I'm having with my five or seven year olds. I don't hold them up on nothing. <laughs> right. I'm not, I'm don't. not a legend. I don't. literally talk to them like yes. that. Like, your quality of life is going to be diminished every right. time you decide right. that hey, your I'm fear is more you. important yeah. than your help. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. They don't got to get it, though. Right. <laughs> it don't make sense later. I don't know what else to say. How else to say it? <laughs> Dog. <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. Um, where we at? Uh, <laughs> it's okay. You got kids, you know. I know. And that's why like, I'm laughing. It's but, real. But, oh, I wanted you to. I wanted you to think about this too, because this is this was such a really hilly moment for me. Like, I looked at my kids' lives, mm-hmm. and my kids been through it, trauma wise. I'm gonna just say it. Mm-hmm. Like they they had moments and instances 
And really, it can be the smallest things when you think about it. Mm-hmm. Like, you could tell your kid, no, on a Sunday, it's hot outside and they want ice cream because you don't have cash. Mm-hmm. You only got cash app. And they, <laughs> they don't know how to accept no. Yeah. And now, <laughs> and now, mommy is Corella Deville. I'm like, <laughs> right. it can be that simple. That's how it works. But, but mm-hmm. if I'm looking at it objectively, my kids have been through enough for me to say they probably need to break some trauma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They probably need to breathe a little bit. They, yes. got, they probably got heightened emotions. They probably mm-hmm. got heightened sense of fear, this kind of yeah. thing. But if I think about it enough, and I look at their life as opposed to mine, they have never better. seen a system. They know both their parents. Mm-hmm. They spend equal time with both their parents. You know what I'm saying? They, they know that they love this. They don't have a question or doubt about it. They so not scared and, not, and, and believe that people are there to protect them and, hurt, and help them and not hurt them that they don't have no fear in their body <laughs> about <Okay>. shit. <laughs> and I raised them like that on purpose, but... Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, that's beautiful. But it's like, so I, I really, I really want you to like dig and I want you to like express like, you know, it, just in the ways and they could be really simple. It could be some of the simplest stuff. Like, you know, every time my babies call me, I'm there. I know we got, we all got times. You can, you can probably remember times where, where people who were supposed to take care of you were just unavailable <laughs> and they could be right in front of your face and be completely unavailable. unavailable. Yeah. Checked out. I try to give myself grace when it comes to parenting with that. Like, just know that just the way my brain works, that I know I'm going to traumatize them, but it's okay. As long as they're a little <laughs> less traumatized right, than right. me. Yeah. And they understand that with the resources I was given one day, when they, because you never understand so you have your own kids. Right. So with the resources that I was given that I did the best that I could, mm. that's all I'm going to keep, like, holding on to. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I'm probably they're going to have some scars and some stuff they might need some therapy for. But I did the best. The I learned. Best. I didn't. I tried not. I tr- I'm intentionally trying to break generational curses. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, alcoholism is a big one in my family. Mm. I'm intentionally trying to break generational curses. So right. I kind of... Try to keep that in the forefront of my mind, even because my baby don't have some traumas too. Even as we healing as a family, you know, um, unit. Healing so, as a family. That's very important. Healing as a family unit. I talk to them very direct too. Like, girl, if you, so you telling me you don't want to take a shower today? Don't nobody like no girl that don't take no shower today. You need to get your butt up there and take a shower. Nobody keep going back and forth with you. Like, we have these conversations. <laughs> like, get your butt up there. Like, yeah, like, Watch you ain't going to have no friends. Like, your ass, please. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now, you a girl, you a girl, you know. So, <laughs> like, get it together, sis. My mom used to call it the cracks, crevices, and creases. You gotta get all three. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. So, yes, it's trying to heal together, man. I think it's important for us as parents to not want to, not want to just make it at least three steps better than the last generation. You may, it's a legacy because you're gonna be dead and gone, and you're gonna need somebody to take care of you. Before you did it, gone. If you're lucky, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. If your kids don't fuck with you, you if fuck. I'm lucky, I you gonna be back in an isolated chicken. institution as an old person. We was talking about it. It comes full yeah, circle. Yeah. The old folks, the old folks, home. Home. It's the same shit. It's another form home. of it. Yes. Yes. So that's yes. what I'm saying. You, you got to kill yourself so you can your babies can love you. Yeah. yeah. So that your yeah. babies can love you when it's when you become a burden to them. Mm-hmm. If you're lucky, when you become you know, a baby, when you become the baby. I had this like full circle moment, y'all, and I. And I had to repent to God because I was treating my kids like a inconvenience. Mm. Damn. And it wasn't that I wasn't there for them or present or active or none of that. Mm. It was just that every time they had a feeling that was more than normal, mm. every time they was anxious or sad or sick, I was extremely angry about it. And, and it wasn't something that I was like doing on purpose. It's my natural reaction. Right. But I had to take inventory with myself, and and it was like a light went off in my head, like, your kids are not an inconvenience. Nothing about them acts to be. And just because you got shit to do, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That don't, it don't really give you the right to be so frustrated, and you really need to calm the fuck down. Hmm. Hire yourself talking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's real. That's real. And 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 I we use the term generational curse a lot and I bring it up because I really want people to know that this shit is written. It's written in our stories. And it's like if you you can watch any I know we all have seen like charmed and everything. You can watch anything about witches and curses and all of that. And at some point 
even with the Sleeping Beauty, at some point, your your will becomes animatronic towards the goal of the curse. And for people to say, oh, they could have made better decisions, or I never raised them to be like that, all these other extra things, they don't understand the power and nature of an actual curse. Mm. Writing it down. Calling it into existence. And not only do they write it down and call it, but they, and it's something that I do when I pray, right? I, I pray to God. I write my goals down. I speak them into existence with my prayers. I manifest and all these other things, right? And then I put I put action towards that goal. Right. The, the, the wicked do the same thing against you. Mm. They didn't just write it down and tell everybody about it and how to and how to use it. They put forth a concerted effort towards their positive projected outcome, which was your demise. They made it constitutional. They made it bills. <laughs> they, they wrote it, it laws. in law. <laughs> they wrote it in the Willie Lynch papers. They really wrote their shit down. They got. They really they got us fucked up. I just hope y'all really uh, when when. I'm telling you, it was the most freeing moment I have ever experienced. It's like literally being a flower and realizing that, you know, that that little glimpse of light through the dirt and then going up towards it and as being a stem and then a flower and a leaf and, and all these different stages. The first thing was like realizing the trick of the enemy and it's coming through. It used to be a point in time where you know, the slave master, whoever had to come to your quarters to snatch your wife or daughter up out the house. Now you got the TV in your living room and that same slave master is on your TV conditioning and coaching your daughters and wives about the house. Mm -hmm. Your husbands and sons about the house yeah. It's real. And this, and we really have to pay attention to it. We can't just go and we got to, it's, it's less about deprogramming and more about, Cutting, cutting the shit off from the source. Like, it's certain stuff now that I won't watch. Mm -hmm. And when you, think about, when you think about the nature of sacrifices, there is nothing that God has called me to let go of that was not a hindrance to my growth. Mm. I don't miss shit. I'm just saying, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> let, it go. <laughs> let it go. It was the, and I, was, I looked at, and, and I wasn't on medication at the time, but I had been prescribed a bunch of stuff. But from that experience with the SSRIs, I don't trust medication. Mm -hmm. It's enough about syphilis and Africa and all the information that we have out here for me to know not to trust nothing that the doctor go give me that's going to alter my mind. Gotcha. I'm just over it. I'm not having it. So it's enough that I talk to him about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's enough. more than enough. More than enough. <laughs> so uh, I wasn't taking it, but it was like God like shook me. Like, girl, you is not crazy. <laughs> 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 like what yeah. look you're not crazy you right it's a setup like you gonna participate in it <laughs> i was like hell no <laughs> the book stops here buddy <laughs> and it don't and i know that i know that mental illness is a real and serious thing and it doesn't happen like that for everybody and i don't want to make light of it or 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 talk about it like it's a joke because it's not and I know a lot of the a lot of the thought processes and actual physical actions that people have are not up to their control at certain moments and times. Mm -hmm. And trust me, I still struggle with it the same way. It's just that when you get to calling it what it really is, I'm just I'm just saying, when you really get to calling it what it really is and understanding that you know, the basis of bipolar is being duplicitous in nature. And when you being conditioned against your nature and your subconscious and conscious are at a constant battle every day, that's mm -hmm. literally like the definition of bipolar. Understanding that when, you know, your your parents were addicts and they have children, the, the probability of them being an addict goes up 70%. And the the symptoms of addiction and bipolar are parallel. And if you get bipolar at the right age, it can convince you to do drugs like these. When you understand the perpetuation of the conflict and the problem, then you can look the enemy in the eye and say, not me. Right. I encourage you to get every type of help that you can find 
every type of healthy help that you can find. But there is no, just like there is no room that God cannot be in. The enemy makes his way. And we have to use protection when we are seeking comfort and healing from our ailments. Because the easiest person to take advantage of is a sick person. Because sick people often feel a burden already. And so every time they ask for help, they feel like the bare minimum is enough because they already feel like they are not worthy of that help. Okay. And also a sick person is not in as normally desperate to appease themselves or, or, you know, in the pain and suffering that they in. So they are willing to, um, you know, listen to this, the snake venom salesman and, and this kind of thing in order to get help. Um, and, and, so if you know a sick person and sickness looks like all types of things, um, if you know a sick person, if you are a sick person, reach down inside yourself and ask for help. Find, find every dark corner in your body right now. Close your eyes. Find every dark corner in your body, every, every floor that you had to pick yourself up off of. Okay, every every dark corner you didn't have to hide in. And I ask that you go and find that person right now in your conscious mind inside yourself. And allow light to spew out of your body and into that body. Hug them and let them know it's, it's going to be okay. If we didn't do nothing else, we survived. And now we have lessons and options and choices. We can, we are, we do. It's real. Your pain is real. Allow yourself to feel, feel every feeling that you have. As humans, we are not just offered the joyful and the pleasant feelings. We are offered the, the plethora of feelings and emotions, and I want everybody to, to fill themselves up with light and find every dark place that they can inside themselves and just allow light to manifest there. Um, this has been Midnight Coffee, and this is our mental illness episode. Um, today we talked about you know helpful conversations, places that we can find information like. Uh, the conversation like we have with 19 Q. Oh, high level conversation. High level conversation. Yeah. And we talked about um, the young ages that trauma starts and how it is, how it is used to breed and, and, and trauma. Um, and, and what we can do, the, the tools that we have, which are each other and our own mental agility that can help. Um, reach through and past who, who trespasses against us and find divinity and peace. Um, thank you so much. Thank Yay. you. Thank hey, you for having me. Tell us where to find you. Um, if y'all want to follow me, y'all can follow me on Instagram at M A E H E N N Y underscore. That's May Henny underscore. And make sure y'all check out Toast After Dark. Yes, on the Shotcast Network. Yes. Any any closing moments that you want to say? To kind of bring your your story and your, I'm so grateful that you shared with us. Um, Thank you. But yeah, yeah. to bring everything yeah, to a, to a head and a point for us. I think it's important to know yourself. Hmm. Know yourself includes knowing your brain. They fucked your brain up. It's your turn to get to know it and make that bitch work for you. Yes, that's real. Accept the bad shit you've been through and make that shit work for you. Mm-hmm. Yes. If you sneaky as fuck. Be sneaky as fuck now, making use that it, shit work it for you. Real. Amen. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Yes. <laughs> okay, and my co-host, Eric Thompson. All right, you can follow me on Instagram at Eric Thompson Jr. and Facebook as well. And closing remarks. I had a whole thought in that shit. Um, it's okay. <laughs> you can start with telling us more about your books. Yeah. All right, so my first book is called Blame It on the Music, and I wrote, and talked about 66 songs that I feel like changed my life. We talked about trauma. Like, my mama passed when I was 13 years old, and that shit was traumatic as fuck. 
But I felt like I didn't have a therapist. I didn't have nobody to go to, no trauma. Uh, what did they call it? Like grief counselors. We didn't have that. So I feel like the music was that for me. So that's what the book, the gist of the book is that. And then my second book is Emotional Black Guy. It's a poetry book. And I just wrote like the poems I collected over the years. But I took the title Emotional. I, I've been called Emotional since I was a little kid. And they used to like make it a bad thing. And when I got older and learned like my emotions work for me and not against me, mm-hmm. that shit changed everything. So. And my last books, I, po- I wrote affirmation books for boys and girls. Uh, speaking, I said that about my mom passing. I didn't know that she had, she used to say to like older people in our family, like, fuck that, my kid's going to be somebody. Mm. And I'm like, damn, I feel like she affirmed my life. I didn't know that she That's said that, but my, my cousin reminded me of that. So like when I started thinking about affirmation books, that was in the back of my mind. I'm like, okay, my mama made me do this it's shit. So, man, yeah, that shit is so beautiful. fire. I'm like, I feel like I got to fulfill that prophecy. So, you are. <laughs> you are. Yes, yeah, you thank are. God. Thank, thank, thank God you. for good black mama. Facts, yeah. facts. My mama affirms me in a lot of, in, a, in so many, so many ways. Uh, she called me a genius from the time I was yeah. like, knee high to mm. a duck, as they call it. Um, and she always, I can always count on my mama to tell me I am intelligent and beautiful. Um, when I really, really, really need to hear it. Uh, so shout out to mamas. Um, and um, so I'm Coffee Dark and Sweet, K-O-F-F-E-E, Dark Apostrophe and Sweet. And you can find me that way no matter where you are looking for me. Um, you can also find me under Energetic Investments and One Crafty Mama, where I do food and poetry and things of that nature. Um, thank y'all for uh, joining us on this journey today. It was Definitely a conversation that needed to be had. I'm grateful. You know, it's always the right people in the room here. Um, here at Shotcast Studios. Um, and, yeah. So, I guess my closing remark would be, to, when you're looking for the source of self, don't forget to scratch your problems. Because underneath is the solution. You cannot ignore the issues. You cannot ignore what caused your issues and expect to redeem yourself from Mm. a monster you know nothing about. Mm. You got to study your opponent just as much as you study yourself and figure out the limps that they went through to be buried. It's going to make sprouting so much more. Thank y'all for spending the night with me. Coffee out. (laughs) Deuces. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that was dope. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yay. Thank you, guys. That was Thank the you. second that one that made me feel like, this is why I do this. This is yeah. what I'm supposed Yay. to be doing. Yeah, it's Yay. using the Oracle for a good thing. Yeah. Oh, I remember what I was going to say now. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I feel like, so it's dope because I feel like the power in sharing what you done been through, mm-hmm. that's our biggest give to people. Mm-hmm. Like, cause you, the things you said about what you went through, I haven't heard that. So it's like, wow. now I can relate that to people in my life. I'm like, damn, maybe that's why they acting the way they acting mm-hmm. or they doing it. So mm-hmm. it's that. In any amount man. of time trying to ascern the intentions of other people, yeah. drive you to an early grave. Yeah. Really, it doesn't matter what they intended. It only matters how it made you feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and how it made you feel is something that you have to take up with yourself first. Yeah. So really, other Talk. people matter this much. <laughs> that's what I'm learning more and more every day. They matter this much. <laughs> Start the day, and then when you when you locked in with yourself to the T, that's when you have those boundaries. Like, bitch, yeah. you don't even matter. So mm. since you don't you matter, don't I'm only so gonna personal. give you a little bit. Yeah, it's not I'm even, only gonna yeah. give you a little bit of me. Yeah. I'm only you only get a couple of drops of this juice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then you get a couple of drops, and you yeah. get a couple. I'm gonna, of say drops. The rest of my I'm gonna go it's back in the isolation uh, and build up mm-hmm. real exclusive rights. <laughs> okay, to the juice. Yeah, that's real shit. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah, I knew the conversation. Was it's about eleven eleven. Hey. Yay! <laughs> Good angel the math number. is math. Right. <laughs> I'm like yeah. a legit like kid in a candy store happy right yeah. now. I'm so right. grateful for y'all. Yeah, that was this fire. is dope. Like I, I don't even talk like this on our show like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know this, but, so I was like, okay, so this is the serious <laughs> talk. I'm like, I guess so. <laughs> You gotta go there. I knew that yeah, from the beginning. You gotta go there. 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 You gotta go 
glad I can get to the bottom of it with yeah, y'all. It's, it's a journey. Oh, it's a journey, man. It, we, if so many years happen, I, I think about if I went through 30 years of bullshit, I got a, 30 years to undo Hell this shit. Yeah. You feel me? No, so, you actually got like four years for every one year. That's see? the actual whole scientific see? number. Yeah, that's why I was like, I, so so black people should just get free therapy for forever. Like, ever, and we definitely ever. should not be paying taxes. That's so right, we so. talk about reparations, but I'm really the trying other, to the part manifest of that is, though, shit like We got to figure out that we don't really have to. Have to what? Sovereign? Pay taxes. It's, sovereign? it's ways. That's yeah. a part. It's ways around it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, so that's. And I feel like I'm trying to start a commune. I'm ready ready to start a commune, man. (laughs) A community. (laughs) I want people to be like, oh, what's that one goal that you haven't reached yet? A neighborhood. I but I don't just want a neighborhood. I want a, like a city, state, and then but you start in the neighborhood. Oh, I want you start with a city. Yeah, you start yes. with a city. I want a block. Yeah. Give me a please a city block. Yeah. Thank you. I want like, <laughs> I want a little house on the prairie <laughs> on, on some big ass fucking yeah. land somewhere. Yeah. That's what I want. Like we we churning butter in this bitch. <laughs> I feel like the world is getting back to that too yeah, because we simpler with times. COVID it made it like damn you need people yeah. and they what they try to do is push everybody no you got to stay by yourself you got to stay isolated mm-hmm. like they still trying to push you see that. how fast we rushed outside Man, when they was like exactly. go outside I'm like, we miss people like, it was so we miss y'all it, yeah. I was at night. He's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm around fuck it. people. Fuck it. Fuck it. Mask <laughs> off. Like a mask off. For real. Mask off. Mask off. Mm-hmm. Mama and I didn't give no fuck. Yeah. At all. I was in that bitch. At all. Like, yes. But I was never, I not got COVID too. And was not, he's still not scared yeah, of it. You still ain't gonna put no mask on? No, nigga, I don't give a fuck. I ain't I really that didn't shit care. at all. I'm like, I didn't. Yeah. I put on masks sometimes. I didn't catch it. I feel like putting on the mask was a part of claiming it. Yeah, for sure. But it was like, even like, they like, dude, I never got tested for the shit because I'm like, whatever. I, if Donald Trump said some shit and I'm like, people didn't like him. And he was like, the the reason that the rate, the uh, numbers are so high is because so many people are getting tested. Like, think about some people that weren't feeling sick, but then they tell you you got some mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. So it's like, or they could do that with make anything. you get tested. Yeah. No, t- that's yeah. what happened. Now you got time. that in my psyche. It. When you said something earlier about your mom uh, sending the crime and the D shit, I thought of like, what you feed grows. So it's like, I'm already afraid. So now you giving me crime in the deep. You are giving me now and I'm the scared. fear is already and reasonable. Women getting killed fear. in the city every yeah. day. The fear is already reasonable. But yeah. then when you add fuel to it, now you got mm-hmm. the irrational side of it. Now we all anxious as fuck. My advice is hey, to stop sister, how you at doing? that shit. I yeah. stopped following like, all you know, the We can't even talk to our neighbors. Because it's like, gotcha. if I keep looking at this, I'm going to see how bad it is. But I know it's another side. Like It's good shit, too. So I'm going to go look at the good shit. I don't have to be reminded that the bad shit exists because I know that already. <laughs> so I'll just yeah, stop even paying attention to that they shit. They just highlight it. That's part of their Man. propaganda too. Yeah, hell yeah. So that they already know how our heads is it are. Is possible? Real. Is media possible too today without being propaganda? What they talking about last hell night no. is the importance of all of us starting our own fucking media mm-hmm. like we fucking this doing right is now. Why? Cause and that's, yeah, that's real shit. Back to the Cause propaganda because is good. Because we tired of that shit. Mm-hmm. Propaganda Sick of it. And they it can be Sun Lao and all the war. We, they was like, yeah. I said people need to study war more yep. too. Yep. Because they talk about you don't win hearts. You don't win the war by guns. Hell you no. win the war by the hearts and the, and mind, the mind of the people. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that's what allowed um, the Hitler. Just, Russia with the him. Obama mm-hmm. stuff. That's right. what they was talking about the last mm-hmm. one. How, yeah. they, how they was slamming Obama when he was in office. That was a bot that Russia fucking had. Mm-hmm. And they was talking about that shit and how they, you know, it got into the psyche. So we start like this, speaking our truth. That's, That's what you're talking about. This is right, us writing our yeah. own constitution. Yeah. What we doing right now mm-hmm. and it, putting money into it and quality into mm-hmm. our shit is mm-hmm. fine to catch fire. I just looked at some shit I recorded so one day. I invited you. I got a th- yeah. thank you. Yeah. I'm happy yes. to be here. I just looked and got anxious because it's up to a thousand fucking views right now. And I was just on that bitch talking. I'm like, a thousand views? What if I wake up this bitch at 10,000? Mm-hmm. And I'm just like... I didn't think no thought when I posted that shit. I was just trying to get somebody to tune into the fucking network, you know. Mm-hmm. But people don't fucking put their eyes on it. Cause you got so, something to say. I guess I had something to say in that mm-hmm. video, but get, that's the point. Like mm-hmm. we is tuning back to the roots with each other. Yeah. I know I'm made to our be our narrative. So. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's a story that specifically we here to tell mm-hmm. that keep and it's like they kind of keep trying to cut around it. Jordan Peele got to play it in layers, but no, I'm gonna say that shit. Say I know what you did but to my what, daddy, bitch. What Jordan Peele do? Like, <laughs> okay, everybody <laughs> run me my part. motherfucking yeah. reparations, bitch. <laughs> I think that's the part we gotta stop attacking each other too, because it'll be like, no, do it this way. It's like. Yeah. Everybody play their part. When you talk yes, about war, it's like I, everybody yes. not meant to that's be on the said. front lines. Like, and it's very radical right. just to take 
take care of your you own family. Think. You got to yeah. take care of yes. it. You got to yes. be the computer programmer. Yes. Like all of us exist yes. and are necessary. Yes. Was that good on time Community. or did I, was I under or over? No, you good. Okay. My fucking head hurt, okay. man. Okay. <laughs> hey, we all got a roll. And we all got a position. Fire, man. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> It's okay. Keep These doing it. It's okay. So I know. I'm. I'm so I know. Yes. I'm trying to not. I'm trying. I don't want to overwhelm my listeners. High level but conversation. I feel like Fuck they. That. Fuck that. I feel like the right people gonna listen yeah, and they gonna it. need to hear this. That's shit. what I was talking yeah. about. I feel like this gonna be the one. We are gonna mm-hmm. be like coffee up. Yeah. I, yeah, I was on an episode with Coffee. Like, yep, yeah. you, I, I, I can introduce you to her if you want to. Cause <laughs> For real. She For need real. a whole. She need a whole everything. <laughs> because she not holding nobody up. She's stirring pots out here. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, that was fire. That was fire. That was fire.